What's going on guys, Stellar's Cruz here, back with another video, and today's video is going to be a little bit different. I'm just going to be showing you guys another side of me that I really enjoy, which is photography and editing cool pictures. So I'm going to be shooting with Thomas Agudo, uh, check out his Instagram on the screen, he's pulling up right now. Super talented photographer, he's really getting into it lately and so am I. There he is! Hello. <laughs> What's up? So I'm gonna kind of take you guys through a whole day of us kind of shooting and taking a lot of pictures. And then at the end of the video, I'm gonna go through and show you how I edit them to make them look good for my Instagram page. And we'll just take you guys through it. So let's get started. <laughs> what the hell was that? Did you just choke on your water? I went down the wrong pipe. <laughs> All right, so we're on our local field right now. There's not really nets anywhere. So hopefully we can uh, work with some of these, but Tom, introduce yourself. Who hey, are you? Hello, <laughs> hello, my name is Tom. Thomas, Tomas, doesn't matter. I'm just gonna help Stelios shoot around, take some pictures. <laughs> I might shoot the lacrosse ball. I used to play lacrosse. I'm very bad at shooting, but I wasn't a bad player. Nice. The nets are locked up. I mean, we can honestly like try to turn these. Damn, dude, that sucks. So Thomas is gonna be shooting with a Sony A6500 with a 50 millimeter prime lens. We're gonna get some cool shots with good depth of field, so it's a nice blurry background. And we're just gonna kinda take some random shots. I'm gonna toss a GoPro onto Thomas' head and show you kinda his point of view. For now, we're just gonna kinda wing it, even though the nets are locked up, and see if we can get some cool bangers. Like, what do you normally adjust? Uh, you always the aperture because I always want that depth of field yeah. or like lighting situations. Mm -hmm. um, and then the shutter speed for if I'm like shooting Stelios while he's shooting lacrosse ball or running or anything action. All right, so we're gonna put the GoPro onto his head, get some cool shots, and we'll show you how they come out. So like right now, we're shooting at one one thousandth of a second. Uh, the aperture is at 1.8 and the ISO is at 100. So this should get nice and crispy with Stelios. Okay, I'm gonna turn my body a little bit more like that. So like okay. A little bit. Okay. Well, that's good. I like the way it looks. I get absolutely drilled in that. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. But I'm still kind of. Yeah, have it higher up. Okay. Okay, we just uh, hooked up the camera to the fence. I look like an idiot. <laughs> Tom's wearing the GoPro. The nets are all locked up, so we're gonna have to fake it to make it seem like I'm shooting at the net. It's still gonna look pretty cool though. And we're just gonna keep shooting, get some more shots. I'm scared of I'm gonna shoot it that way. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, that was the scariest <laughs> thing ever. <laughs> that's, that was... that's really scary. Okay, three, two, one. <laughs> no, that kind of sucks. That one's yeah, that one's Sweet. I, I picture this as like my little own movie theater. It doesn't matter how bright it is out, because even if there's a glare on the screen, I just put my eye up to here and I get to see the picture exactly how it came out. That's sick. I yeah. like that one. That's cool. Hell yeah. Well, I just hit the pipe and the ball went flying, so I might have to go fetch that ball real quick. Oh, side of the fence, get you shooting at me, but like kind of get that like chain. Oh no, it could come out cool. Oh, oh Tom! That scared it went me. Through the fence. Wait, it went through the fence? <laughs> Wait, hold on. <laughs> I just went right through the fence. Yeah, but no, let's try it one more time. I, I kind of like this shot. You Dude, I gotta be careful it doesn't hit you. Okay. <laughs> right, I'm gonna try not to hit Thomas this time. Tom! What? <laughs> Through the it's okay. <laughs> I think we got it though. <laughs> I just kind of want to mention real quick kind of who we take inspiration from. And I know Tom could probably agree with this, but a few people I look up to as far as like photography and videography. It's probably Alan Palander, Valdez, who does some sick stuff, or Sam Colder, like yes. Mac Homo's so good I'm with video. I'm such a big fan of like videographers and photographers that do crazy transitions like Sam Colder, Mac Como. I like honestly don't even know how they do it. We're out here, we enjoy doing this stuff and it's just a ton of fun. So definitely recommend it if you guys have a pretty nice camera or honestly, don't even, it doesn't really matter what kind of camera you're using you as long as you're- Awesome pictures with- Like an iPhone. With the phones now. Yeah, we're just gonna keep grinding like this and keep taking cool pictures. Three. Two, one. I just had deja vu. Okay, we have done this shot before. What the heck? 
concert. That's perfect concert. Look, keep moving forward. I'll tell you where I want the action to be. Right there, right there. Cause that is the spot in between. If I go like this? Yeah, perfect. Three, two, one. Yeah, that's good. I like how they low. I always like having a subject, so that's why I do a lot of my pictures with like a guitar or like my lacrosse stick or my camera or something. Just because I like having something to hold. Uh, makes it a lot easier. We're probably going to wrap this up pretty soon and head over to a cool spot that Thomas knows, but let's transition over to that spot now. All right, we just made it to the spot. It's this cool bridge with some train tracks, as you can see. Some train tracks. We're going to climb down there and start shooting. I always end up doing this where I vlog when I'm trying to go down a hill. And I always feel like I'm going to fall. You're going to take a shot? Yeah. How does it look? Oh, I like that. It's like a that was pretty cool. So explain how you are a delivery driver and how that helps with photography. Being a delivery driver, it's like scouting. <laughs> Just scouting sick locations. Actually, I write in my notes, like, okay, this spot, because so I don't forget. So I have like eight spots right now that I want to try out. All right, so we're just gonna kind of keep it pretty short. Uh, obviously, I change now. We're gonna get some different shots. So shout out to Tom. He's really good at what he does. And if you aren't following him, make sure to go follow him. Go check him out and support him. Okay, I threw on a different shirt now. Switching up locations a little bit. We're gonna be walking down here towards the water. There's a little lake right here, a bridge. We're going to a new location. It's a cool little lookout spot. So we'll take you guys in. Yo, that looks sick. I know, right? It's like hazy over there. Let's go on top of this thing. I have an idea of a shot I saw right now that I want to do. Okay. This is so sick. That one's sick. Get a couple of the... No. Yeah. That's perfect. That's perfect. 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 That is a wrap on the day. Took a lot of pictures. Got to see some cool spots in my town. Now we're going to head back and we're just going to do a bunch of editing. I'm going to take you guys through how I edit my photos, at least some of them, uh, just to kind of give you guys an idea of what my initial thoughts are and just kind of how I go about doing it. So we're going to go back now, get started on that, and we'll show you guys how we do it. All right, we're at my house now. I'm gonna hop into editing some of these photos. I'm gonna go through a few of them that I liked that I thought were a little bit different from each other so you guys can see just how I go about editing different photos. I use Lightroom on my laptop. Um, a lot of people use Lightroom Mobile, which is free, or Afterlight, which is like $2 in the App Store. So you can do this stuff on your phone as well if you don't have Lightroom on your computer. Lightroom Mobile is uh, just as good and you can do pretty much the same exact thing. So let's hop in. So I'm gonna start with the lacrosse ones. I really like this one. And obviously, as you can tell, there's not much going on right now. It looks pretty blown out. So the first thing I like to do is just kind of auto change this tone curve. So that kind of just relights the entire image. And after I do that, uh, I like to start editing the colors. So for me, what I like to do is really desaturate the greens and yellows because I don't really like the way they look sometimes. And I like the, the muted green color look. So I kind of like to move the yellows a little bit to the left here and the greens, I like to pump them a little bit more to the right where they become more of like a vibrant green. And you might think that looks kind of weird right now, but just wait and I'll show you how I can fix that. And that should be good for the hue. But then for the saturation, this is where it gets really, really important. So for the yellows, I typically desaturate the yellows almost all the way. Can be a little bit extreme sometimes, but I do like the way it looks. It gets really cool when I start to desaturate the greens because as you can see here, the greens aren't really popping as much and they look kind of muted, which I always thought was a really cool look. Now, an important thing to take note of is the oranges because that's like kind of my skin tone. So I like to play around with those a little bit just so I can kind of get a skin tone color that I think matches the rest of the image. And I'm just gonna kind of go through right now and clean up all the colors. So I make sure any picture that I'm taking or whoever else is taking of me, I make sure that it's taken in raw format, which takes in a lot more information than rather than shooting a flat image. 
So that's why on the left side here, you see that the image is super bright and blown out and doesn't look very good. That's just the camera capturing all the information. But then in post, when you go into edit, you can see all the colors are brought back. Uh, all the light is brought back evenly and it looks a lot better. So I'm gonna go in now and change up the exposure, contrast, highlights, and all that stuff, just kind of the lighting. And I just kind of mess around with these until I kind of find something that I like. Um, and then typically, I don't really mess with clarity too much. I kind of bump it up a little bit sometimes. Otherwise, as you can see, it looks kind of ridiculous. But yeah, like I said, I don't really add too many masks or anything. This is just kind of like a simple edit. A lot of people can go in and add a mask uh, to like brighten up or darken up a spot. So if like my face is too bright, I can go in and kind of change the exposure a little bit just so it kind of matches the rest of the image. But yeah, other than that, that's kind of the way it looks. This is kind of the before and after, I guess you can see here. So I'll show you the final product. Now moving on to this picture here, I thought was really cool. Um, so it originally looked like this, but I ended up going into Photoshop and adding the rest of these balls. I kind of like took the one ball and duplicated it and changed sizes, made it a little bit blurry. So I thought that came out really cool. If you guys wanna see a tutorial on that, comment down below and I can show you guys exactly how, but I thought that was really cool. Uh, moving on to one of the train track pictures. Like I said, the first thing I do is kind of click the auto adjust uh, for the lighting and see what happens. I kind of like having the before and after up all the time just so I can really see the differences. The contrast I can bring up a little bit just to make it seem more dynamic. And now is when I go back into the colors. So again, I go through all the colors and just kind of adjust it the way I like, uh, starting with the hue. Um, typically I change a lot of the yellows and the greens again, bringing the greens up to more of like a vibrant color. Um, the yellows kind of go more towards red. Obviously the greens look a little bit stupid here, so I'm gonna desaturate them a little bit. Uh, same with the yellows here. Um, honestly, the, my entire editing process is pretty much just trial and error. Um, I like changing the colors just to make them look a little bit different. So yeah, I'm just gonna kind of mess around with the colors right now and see what looks good. And sometimes I like to add a little bit of a vignette on the outside. As you can see, if you go heavy, it looks really dynamic, but I kind of usually add like a medium uh, vignette just to kind of leave it there. Don't go too crazy with that, but it does make it seem more dynamic and it makes the subject pop a little bit more. But yeah, this looks pretty good right now for this edit. Again, nothing too crazy. I might change some of the colors a little bit more and I'll show you guys the final product. All right, so the next picture I'm gonna move on to was from the other side of the train track where I was wearing the white shirt. I like to go in here quickly and click auto just to make sure the lighting gets kind of adjusted. Uh, and then I kind of go in and tweak it just a little bit to make sure it looks good. Bring the shadows down a little. Uh, I'm gonna up the clarity just a tad. And now for the colors. Okay, so gonna keep saying it. Gonna desaturate the yellows. Gonna desaturate the greens a bit. Gonna bring the greens up to a little bit more of a rich green color. I'm gonna add a light vignette on this one. Yeah, I think my skin tone looks a little bit odd here. Um, so I'm gonna start to adjust that just a little bit. I think I look a little bit orange. Um, so I'm gonna adjust the hue a little bit. I'm uh, gonna adjust the saturation just a little bit and the luminance a little bit. So yeah, I think the main thing I focus on is kind of desaturating a lot of the image. I don't like when there's too bright of colors that it kind of ruins the image. I like to make mine a little bit darker and moodier, but when there are cases where there's a lot of color, I like to make things pop. Um, but in these cases, it's in the woods, there's not a lot of poppy colors, a lot of greens and browns. So I do like to desaturate those a little bit and fix that. So I'm gonna go through this real quick adjust some of the lighting settings, and I'll show you the final product. So the last picture I'm gonna edit is me playing wall ball. So it is a little bit grainy, but I thought it came out pretty cool. I'm gonna click the auto tone setting again, um, just to see kind of what that does. I'm gonna up the contrast a little bit, up the highlights a little bit. Uh, I think that actually looks pretty good right off the bat. Again, start changing the colors a little bit, drop the saturation of the yellow, drop the saturation of the green. You can see it starts to kind of add that cool muted green color. So it's not looking too bad. And then I'm going to add a light vignette just to kind of add a little bit of uh, pop to the subject. And to get a cool effect, I notice when there's a lot of blue in an image with some oranges, if you desaturate the blue a little bit, it kind of gives it this like almost rustic vibe, which I, which I think is kind of cool. But that's if you want to go pretty intense on the color change. So I'm gonna add a little bit more blue back. 
But obviously, if you're watching this video, you don't have to do it exactly like me. Obviously, I'm not an expert. This is just kind of what I have done in the past and what I kind of taught myself to do. So for all I know, I'm doing this completely wrong. But at the end of the day, the pictures come out pretty cool and I'm happy with them. So what I end up doing for Instagram is pretty much copying and pasting these edits. So if you're on a photo in Lightroom and you click copy, it copies all the settings. And if I were to go here and then I click paste, it adds the exact same edit on there. So, so it looks very similar to the last picture. So they have the same theme going through. And I think that's just an easy way to kind of go through. If you edit one picture that is similar to others uh, as far as coloring and lighting, and you copy the same settings, you can paste it onto another picture and kind of adjust it the way you like. So they all look kind of the same. That's kind of the end of this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. I know it was a little bit different, but I've been wanting to make a video kind of like this just to show you guys how I go about taking and editing my photos, uh, especially for Instagram, because a lot of you guys have been asking. Hopefully you guys learned something. Other than that, guys, I hope you enjoyed watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Peace out, have a good one.